Today we finally get to talk about something officially that has been nothing but rumors for quite some time now. Well technically it was more than rumors as when we talked about it last year over at HondaProKevin.com, Honda had just filed for the trademark so we knew they were cooking something up. We just didn't know what but we had an idea. Now keep in mind all of the information we're talking about today is out of Europe as American Honda has not officially announced this bike yet so at the time of making this there is some information I can't speak on. This video is just going to be covering some of the highlights and then we'll do a deep dive once I have the bike in front of me. Now first up this is not an entirely new bike. This new 2022 Honda NT1100 Sport Touring Motorcycle is built off the Africa Twin chassis and it utilizes the same engine and drivetrain too. However, Honda did make some tweaks to push it away from the adventure side of things and to make it more on-road friendly so you can click off the miles in sporty fashion. While you still have the proven semi-double steel cradle frame and bolt-on aluminum subframe, your caster angle is now 26.5 degrees on the NT instead of 27.5 on the AT. Plus, the wheelbase is slightly shorter now, coming in at 60.4 inches instead of 62 inches, and you also lost some ground clearance in there too. But since this isn't something most will take off-road, I doubt you'll miss the almost 10 inches of ground clearance in exchange for 6.9 inches. And with these changes, it also brought the seat height down from 33.5 inches in the AT's low position to 32.3 inches on the NT. And Honda also swapped out the beefy 45mm Showa forks for a 43mm Showa fork with 5.9 inches of travel, while in the rear you have a Showa shock with matching travel. Plus, both ends have preload adjustability. And all of this equipment helps her tip the scales at 525 pounds for the manual transmission. And if you want Honda's DCT automatic, it bumps your curb weight up to 547 pounds. Brakes are carried over from the AT with dual 310 millimeter front discs and four piston radial mounted calipers with a single piston set up in the rear. And the 18 and 21 inch wheel combo were swapped out for the usual 17s, sporting a 120-70 up front and a 180-55 in the rear. Now when it comes to the engine, even though it's not a high horsepower screamer, it'll surprise you just how much fun this engine can be, whether it's on the Africa Twin or the Rebel 1100, and I'm going to assume it's pretty much the same on this platform, and I'm anxious to see what those tweaks they've made feel like in real life. But with that being said, it pumps out 100 horsepower at 7500 RPM matching the AT, but it makes slightly less torque. The NT is rated at 76.7 foot-pounds of torque, whereas the AT is 77.4 at the same 6250 RPM, and its fuel economy comes in at 47 miles per gallon. And pair that up with a 5.4 gallon fuel tank and you've got around 250 miles before you're walking. Honda also claims they've optimized the air intake length and also the muffler's internals to produce a pleasing <laughs> low RPM throb and smooth power delivery. If you've ever ridden or heard an Africa Twin, then you know it doesn't need any help in the low RPM throb department. It'll be interesting to see though how much they've quietened it down compared to the AT as it has one of the loudest factory exhausts on any Honda I've seen for the street. Now when it comes to electronics, you don't get Honda's IMU setup on this bike, but you do get an electronics package with some goodies to play around with. You have three default riding modes plus two customizable user modes, three levels of Honda selectable torque control, also known as traction control, plus you also get three levels of wheelie control for when you want to bring out your inner hooligan. Plus, you also have cruise control, which should be standard on drive-by-wire bikes, but Honda apparently doesn't seem to think so but we won't go down that rabbit hole right now. And helping you control all of those electronics is a 6.5 inch TFT touchscreen with three different screen layouts depending on what you want to focus on. Plus you also have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with Bluetooth connectivity and that's paired up with a smaller screen below to show you the other details you need to know. You also get LED lighting all the way around in a USB accessory socket too and thankfully a center stand comes standard as well. To make the NT more friendly for touring, you also have a five-way adjustable windscreen where you can play with its height and angle through six and a half inches of movement. Plus, it comes with upper and lower wind deflectors too. You also have detachable saddlebags that come standard, which saves you more than a thousand bucks, and their capacity comes in at 33 and 32 liters. 
And if you need more storage room, you have plenty of accessories that are available. And the most common will definitely be the trunk and tank bag. Now when it comes to colors, you only have three options available in Europe. Now we'll probably only get one here in the States, knowing American Honda, but the three you have to choose from are rather bland in my opinion. I would love to see this bike dressed in Honda Red. I think it would really make the bike pop, but until they want to play around with their color palettes some more, we're stuck with black, gray, and white. And when it comes to pricing, it's currently priced at $11,999 for the manual and $12,999 for the DCT in Europe. Now you can't do a straight conversion on these to the US dollar, but it does get us in the ballpark and that's going to put us around the $13,000 to $14,000 mark for the manual and a thousand more for the DCT. Will it sell well for that price? That is what's going to be interesting as the sport touring market is really heating up again and this won't be a shoe in for everyone just because it's a Honda. However, the DCT automatic transmission option is something the competition doesn't have. I think it's definitely going to do a lot better than Honda's last few attempts after the ST1300 was phased out, but only time will tell. Now I could ramble on for another hour about this bike as there is so much information to share, but we're going to stop it here and I'll have some more videos in the near future where we dive deeper into what it's all about. With that being said though, I want to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you think Honda has a home run on their hands with the new NT1100? And what do you think Honda should have done differently? Let me know what you guys think and I'll be joining in on the conversation below too. But that's a wrap for this one. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate the support and we'll see you guys in the next one.